September 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Philemon from the New Testament. From Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and collaborer, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your house, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. I pray that the faith you share with us may deepen your understanding of every blessing that belongs to you in Christ. I have had great joy and encouragement because of your love, for the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, brother. So although I have quite a lot of confidence in Christ and could command you to do what is proper, I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. I, Paul, an old man and even now a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus, I am appealing to you concerning my child, whose spiritual father I have become during my imprisonment, that is, Onesimus, who was formerly useless to you but is now useful to you and me. I have sent him who is my very heart back to you. I wanted to keep him so that he could serve me in your place during my imprisonment for the sake of the gospel. However, without your consent, I did not want to do anything so that your good deed would not be out of compulsion, but from your own willingness. For perhaps it was for this reason that he was separated from you for a little while, so that you would have him back eternally, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave as a dear brother. He is especially so to me, and even more so to you now, both humanly speaking and in the Lord. Therefore, if you regard me as a partner, accept him as you would me. Now if he has defrauded you of anything or owes you anything, charge what he owes to me. I, Paul, have written this letter with my own hand. I will repay it. I could also mention that you owe me your very self. Yes, brother, let me have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Since I was confident that you would obey, I wrote to you, because I knew that you would do even more than what I am asking you to do. At the same time also, prepare a place for me to stay, for I hope that through your prayers I will be given back to you. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you. Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my collaborators, greet you too. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. God, what a beautiful story paralleling our own with your son Jesus Christ uh, dying for us. Paul is writing to Philemon about Onesimus, who used to be a slave, technically still is a slave, for Philemon, and ran away, and probably ran away with money in order for him to gain passage. And at that time, under Roman law, the laws were very strict against slaves doing things like that up to the point of death. So technically Onesimus could have been killed for what it was that he did to Philemon. However, Paul is interceding just like you had your son intercede for us. And he's saying your brother, not your slave, but your brother Onesimus has a changed heart. He he was a person with a bad heart and now he's been given a new heart in Jesus Christ and he is doing wondrous things for me and I'm returning him to you and he can do wondrous things for you and I think this is such a, a beautiful article not only because it parallels our relationship with your son Jesus Christ and what he did for us but I also like keeping this in mind when when we are angry at someone else as Christians, our response based upon what they've done is to go and talk to them. It's very clear in the Bible. We go and talk to them. If they won't listen, we bring somebody else and so on and so forth. Sometimes though, we can get so caught up in that first part, that anger, that hurt, that rejection, that resentment, all of those emotions that we forget that the ultimate reason for processing information and confronting fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that, that way is eventually for reconciliation 
we sometimes forget that because we're so caught up in those emotions. And same type of thing here with Paul. He's like, ultimately God wants reconciliation between him and his people and between you and this slave who now has a new heart. And possibly you could even give up that slave title for him so that he could even be more for you. He could be your fellow brother in Christ. And so God, help our hearts today that if we have people we need, need to forgive or grudges we need to let go, that we understand that the process of forgiveness eventually leads to reconciliation. Now that doesn't mean, I know, that doesn't mean necessarily that we always need to reconcile with that person. Some. Some relationships are incredibly bad and unhealthy and caustic for us to be in, but it still needs to reconcile us with that forgiveness piece that there's not anything still holding our heart from letting everything go and turning it over to you, um, whether it be to your justice, your grace, your mercy at that time. And again, it's just so beautiful to see this parallel in this short letter that Paul wrote to Philemon about his uh, runaway slave Onesimus. God help us keep in mind that you showed us incredible grace, incredible mercy by forgiving all our sins through your son Jesus Christ and allow us to then pass on to others that we love per your command, that we love also that same grace and mercy and true forgiveness for reconciliation in all our relationships. In your son Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.